the internet. Thank you so much. Um, before I go to what I wanted to say, I want to tell you a story. I asked him if I can tell the story, and he said he's prepared for the story. This story I have been holding in my heart for a long time, because the, I heard this story when I was in Jamaica, okay? That was in March. So it has been a while I've been holding, and I mention it to so, a few elders, and they keep forgetting, but I'll tell you to now, it's my chance. Anyway, it's to help me relax, probably. I'm so nervous. Okay, the story goes. There was a rich man. It's, oh, have you ever been pushed? Any of you have been pushed when you were young? Anyway, there's a rich man. And this rich man um, has a daughter. She's already up in years and need to be married because he's an old man now and this, uh, he has a daughter. And so he made an announcement that he wanted a man to marry his daughter. The announcement went around and men came because it's a rich man's daughter. And these men, they were ushered into a real large swimming pool. And when the, um, they were all gathered there, the men lined up, the, man, the old man says, okay, whoever can swim the fastest will marry my daughter. Oh, the men look around. And when they give the signal, he was a young man swimming so fast. And he got to the end. You know, he looked back, uh, the thing was, nobody else tried because there was crocodiles in the water. And, but this man swim, and then he looked back and said, who pushed me? <laughs> anyway, have you been pushed? I feel I have. Many years ago, Bill was the personal ministry leader he had song that Margaret and him has chosen. And I felt push, okay? And then they had me to do the personal ministry. I swam. I'm not as fast as the young man. And then another time, uh, Diane was the superintendent. Then I got pushed to be the superintendent because she got tired of it. And I swam. Not as good, but I tried. You know, all we do is try to do what we can. Joe, I thought of you when we sang the song, sir, the opening song. Last Sabbath, you choose that song. So I thought of you. I'm so thankful you're back to church. Please stay because we're praying for you. And for those who have signed up to become members of our church, thank you so much. You know you need it, and if you got pushed, just try what you can do. Because it is a heart service, okay? Now, I am so thankful that you are here, and I'll tell you the background, why I'm here today. Maybe you will understand. I am nervous, I got to move around, and you know, speaking here, although I have done it a few times, it just, but, okay. Last Sabbath evening, we're about to have worship with Lee, and the phone rang. I answered. It was Derek. Josie, can you do, can you preach Sabbath? I said, why don't you ask this person? I haven't heard him for a long time. He said, but I will have to, we will have to pay for the gas and we don't have money. Ask him, I'll pay for the gas. And so he said, okay, I'm going to ask him, but be prepared. I said, oh no, I don't have anything in mind. We had worship. How many of you read the story on the back of every week's lesson? Raise your hand if you do. Okay, well, usually, I, 
there is a boy in my house that like the stories. So one of Saturday evenings when we have worship, we read the story on the back. It's um, anyway, it's a little, still little boy wants to the story, so I do it. And you know, that's what clicked reading this week's or, you know, this week's lesson at the back. Click, oh, this can be what I'm going to do. So that's where I am now, okay? That's what we're going to. And then I found out that this person I, uh, I was wanting for to do the preaching is not available, not going to be available for a long time. So it came to my mind, do we really believe? Before I uh, continue, I am afraid or scared. I might, you see, to tell you the truth, I did not have anything in my notes. Just the text and the pages of what I wanted you to see. Uh, I have uh, been in the emergency room last night, and I'm thankful I'm here. And then this morning, I thought I was going to have a stroke because I had, um, I, uh, I just felt, what is it, my eyes blurred and my head hurt just on the uh, one side, on my right side. So I said, somebody is wanting me not to do it. But uh, I'm so thankful God answers prayer. I prayed, Lord, if you want me to be there, please. I checked my blood pressure. It was on the upper normal, but I'm here today. So I praise God. Before I continue, I want to pray. Father in heaven, you know how nervous I am. Please help me. Open my, our eyes. Open our ears that we may hear your word. Thank you, Father. We need your Holy Spirit, and we need to grow. We need to serve because you, we believe that you are coming soon, that Jesus is coming. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, can you open? All right. Uh, as I tell you, I'm very nervous. I am. All right. Okay. I want, and oh, you know what? After... I have allowed the Lord to let me be used. I decided after the prayer, I go to my, somebody gave me this Bible and three years ago. And I have been reading it ever since. I read also the other version, but I read this. And so that night, it was September, September 2 is my little short reading, but it blessed me. It is found in Mark 4, 26 to 34, and the title is The Kingdom in a Seed. The Kingdom in a Seed. Do you have it? Oh, I will read it from my version. I want you to open your Bible. I want to hear pages turned. I know it's here. But if you brought your Bible or on there, read it. Because sometimes reading it touches our heart from the God's holy word. Um, it's in Mark. Have you found it? I don't want you to uh, not uh, be there. And I will just keep reading. Um, Mark 4. If I, I thought I marked it so I don't have to waste time. But... Um, if you find it, we are going to read it. Parable of the good seed. The kingdom, in my version, okay, the kingdom of God is like a man who sows good seed. Day after day, he works and sleeps and goes about his other chores with confidence, knowing that the seed will sprout and grow even though he can't explain how it all happens, 828, but it happened, and he knows that the soil will produce a harvest without his help. 
It first produces a blade, then the ear, and finally the full-grown corn in the ear. Then, as soon as the corn is ready, he calls his worker to reap what he sowed. If I look here, I can see that almost all of us here plants garden. What do you do? You clear a spot and then you put the seeds in. You, did you, you probably wait the rain to wet it or you sprinkle it, water it. But do we understand how the seed sprouts? We don't. We don't understand. When we, when we do something for the Lord, do we know that they are going to be effective? What do we expect as an effectiveness of the thing we are doing? What is our basis for it? It grows. If it don't grow, we will think, oh, that seed is dead. Isn't it? But we expect the garden to grow, although we did not know how the seed sprouts. There is chemical reaction there that we don't understand. What comes to my mind is we do a lot of different services, different ministries. How many of you know we have a Bible school? Our church is operating, uh, have Bible school. We are with the Discover, Voice of Prophecy. Um, last week, I mailed, I listed those I mailed. I, forgot, I did not have time to count how many lessons I mailed, but there are one, two, three, 17, I think, people from different uh, Hartsville, Tennessee, Tiptonville, Tennessee, Mountain City, Wartburg, Whiteville, Tennessee, Pikeville is the most. And then there's a new one that came in, Clifton, Tennessee. Do you know where these are? These places are? I don't. But I mailed all these lessons. With uh, some of it, six lessons. The smallest is two lessons because they are just starting. It's lesson one and two. Do I know what's going to happen? To these lessons, I plant the seeds. I don't know how it will grow. But God said, but God said here that we plant the seed. We have musical program. Did we plant seed? We do not know. We invited. I enjoyed the man who was, who was um, uh, and willing to come back. He had uh, a conversion experience. We do ministries. We have prison ministries. We just, every, uh, how many of us are volunteers? This church is uh, working on this. And we have ministries, yeah, prison ministries. The end, there has been a few. Do we know the harvest? We don't know. Some were probably have accepted Christ to become their personal savior while they are there. I don't know if it will be carried when they go out. But who is in charge? Who converts the soul? Who converts? Who do the growing? It's God's responsibility. All we do is sow the seeds. What other ministry do we have? Excuse me, but I, my tongue goes so wet, so easy. Oh, so dry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I have, I'm, I'm demented, you know? But even though I'm demented, I'm willing to do what God wants me to do. <laughs> anyway, just like this, I mailed the lesson I don't know if they will get it, you know. I usually laminate their certificate. 
a um, young person from White Bill, a young man, wrote a next letter and said, please have my certificate not laminated because it was not allowed to go in. They shred it. So I had to call again for a new certificate so they, uh, and I did not laminate it. I'm just sharing with you that, um, you know, we're just sowing the seeds. You see, the reason I like prison ministry, they, uh, they are in a group. The seats may be filled. And I can tell them I'm an old woman, so you need to behave. And I want your attention. And I can be an old woman there telling them to listen to me. And they listen. If I look at them, they stop their talking. Anyway, I enjoyed it. And I, although it is not always uh, that easy, there are times that are challenging, but um, I'm doing what the Lord has for that ministry. I'm thankful that Lily came. You know, Lily was a little girl when she started coming, and I'm glad she is here. So Lily, keep coming. When Pam is not uh, teaching, she will have a class there for your age. And it will be, thank you, Pam, for your willingness to do that. All of us can do something. We do not know what the seeds, how the seeds will grow. But um, God's, it's God's responsibility. And we do food pantry. It is uh, Serb, you know, I mentioned that the uh, Lorbrook and the Spanish church is helping us. I want you to come and visit. You know, now I have, uh, I wanted just one person at a time for those who can. And just to share with you one time, there was a late, last time, a lady, I asked for the other lady to, uh, Miss Sharon, you, I appreciate very much your help because without you, I won't be able to handle it. I needed help there. And um, this lady came, I was able to speak with her, and then I found out she just came from the doctor. She do not know what is the result of her test, but she was almost tearful. Sounds like something was wrong. And so I finally said, let's have prayer. She really appreciate the prayer. She do appreciate what uh, we have. And so, but you know, we're struggling right now. I, I want to invite everyone to come to the meeting tomorrow morning because it's very important that you come, especially um, because we need to survive. We need to continue. Do you believe we are, where, what, what was I? Okay, do you really believe we need to exist? Then come tomorrow. I am thankful. You know, I have known James since he was a young kid. I'm thankful he's back. I'm thankful, Bo and Paris, you're here. Your parents' prayer was answered. I'm thankful for every one of you, for our new, going to be new members, for choosing to come back, Miss, uh, oh, you see, I told you I'm demented, Miss Carol. Thank you for coming. And I, are you coming back for good? Thank you so much. You're needed, your presence, even if you just sit on the pew, you serve God because it gives encouragement to the one who are doing what they were asked to do. Thank you. And those who haven't put their application for membership, please do. We need you. We need everyone. Because if we want to survive, we need you. And as I said, if there's anything I want this church to survive are those who have come back. We do not know who else have passed through our door that will be coming back someday. Because what they have learned while they are young, you know, there's that promise. What is that promise? Teach the children while they are young. 
Diane and Mike, I'm waiting for you guys to come back. The atolls, I have seen them growing up. It makes me sad when I don't see them. And, but you know, we all have, uh, we all are thankful. There are many more young people that have passed to our door. I just want to see them back. How are we welcoming, going to welcome them? God has, we have planted a seed in their heart. It's God's responsibility, but we need to do something, don't we? Sometimes I don't really feel I'm at their level because all I can do is give them a hug because they're precious, they're special. Um, you know, the other time I have uh, read this, uh, we read this for morning worship in the morning, and um, I hope you don't mind, but let me read to you. I don't want you to fall asleep on me. Uh, where was it? I marked it and I, the marker seemed to have disappeared. What is our date now? It is creative, oh, creative um, something. Maybe if the Lord wants me to read this, he will let me find it quick. Anyway, I cannot find it, so I am not going to waste my time looking for it. He did not want me to read that. You know... Uh, how we have, we have still 450 of this book. 450, and you have some of it right now. Why do you have it? Why did I ask for you to have it? We are trying, it is the general conference project for this year to give away the great controversy. But we are scared in giving this away. We are, we don't, we're not, um, we are not comfortable. I think I have carried, um, we have I think 700 of these if I am right. I cannot remember how many, but I've carried several because I am, the Lord, to me, I felt like the Lord allowed me to go to the great controversy uh, tour so I can do something about this. I want you to open the book. Let's read. Let's do something. I want you to open. That's why you have it. How do I give this book? I tell them the story, and it's 140, page 140. Uh, the title is, if I can see, it's about John Calvin. You know, Ted Wilson had a series on the Facebook about great controversy. He picks his stories from it, like the stories of John Calvin, and it's in 140. A cousin of John Calvin's who had joined the reformers was in Paris. The two kinsmen, it's the paragraph there, the second or what do you call it? The two kinsmen often meet and discuss together the matter that were disturbing Christendom. Now I will go down, but John, but there, there are but two religions in the world, said Olivetan, the Protestant. And the one class of religions are those which have believed, invented, you know, you can read the story and then you can share it. So I tell them the story of how John, John Calvin did not want to join the reformers. But one day, it's on the bottom, while it, on the second to the bottom paragraph, it says, while he's still engaged in these fruitless struggles, John Calvin, chancing one day to visit one of the public squares, witness there the burning of a heretic, heretic. He was filled with wonder at the expression of peace 
which rested upon the martyr's, count, martyr's countenance. And guess what? Because of what he saw, he started to change. He became one of the reformers known. And I have uh, climbed the church. He has a big church in Geneva. Retelling them the stories of some stories here, you will have the courage to give the book. And so just read this. There are a lot of good stories in there. And one more thing, another story that I like to mention is in 159. 159 is a story of Tyndale. Tyndale had print because of his, dis of his desire to give the, to print the New Testament to reach the people, he printed the New Testament. And then um, a bishop, whatever, bought a stack of Bible, the New Testament, with the intention of burning them. And because of that, the money, if you will read it on 159, it says that because of the money that he got at that time, he was able to print more in a better, okay, I'll read. The Bishop of Durham at one time bought off a bookseller who was a friend of Tyndale, his whole stack of Bibles for the purpose of destroying them, supposing that this, uh, supposing that this would greatly hinder the work. But on the contrary, the money does furnish purchased material for a new and better edition, which by this could have been published. When Tyndale was afterward made a prisoner, his liberty was offered him on condition that he would reveal the names of those who had helped him meet the expense of printing the Bible. He replied, that the Bishop of Durham had done more than any other person for paying a large price for the books left on hand. He had enabled him to go on with good courage. I like stories like that. And it was sometimes negative things we experience. And yet God uses it for his good. We plant the seeds. God will let it grow. And he, do we believe, do we believe of what the Bible says? Do we believe that it's God? We are only to plant the seed. And we have to trust that God is going to let our garden grow. It's almost harvest time. And of course, the farmer the farmer harvests, you know, and as soon as the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle for the harvest time has come. We harvest. We continue on. I don't know, honestly, how to follow up with some of these because especially those who are on other cities away from Pikeville, even the ones in Pikeville, I don't know if where they are. My eye is blurring on me. Okay. Um, we are commanded in Matthew 28. Some of you know this, this very well, but you know, we always need reminders. We cannot remember everything. And, but we, are, we need reminders. Sometimes we forget what we believe. Sometimes we forget that the Lord wants us to plant the seed. It can be the seed of kindness. I told somebody who was very unhappy because he was, she was to come back to the nursing home. I said, you have ministry you do not know. You have a beautiful smile. You can just smile and you know what a smile can do on a person? It helps lighten somebody's burden. Smile. 
because our smile is given to us. I remember Loretta. She says it takes, what is that muscle on the muscle? It takes uh, far more muscle it's, uh, than the smile. The smile takes less. And you know, we attended, I attended the empowerment last uh, Thursday night. And the focus was, and the med devotional was, what can laughter do? I cannot share with you everything because I am demented, I can't remember. But the laughter, we need to laugh. Smile, laugh. We need some of those. I cannot make people laugh much, but we are commanded to plant the seed, okay? All right, this is on the Great Commission. Jesus spent a number of days with the disciples. This was after the resurrection. Then, before he left, he said, all power in heaven and in earth has been given to me, so go and tell people of all nations, all nations, some of different nations come, comes to us. Need to welcome them. So go and tell people of all nations the good news and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them everything I've taught you. I'll always be with you. Oh, what a promise. God will be with us. I don't know if I have told you. One time I was driving alone, going to the prison. It was Friday night, Friday evening. And I saw I was meeting a pickup truck with a ladder that was wobbling around. And I was just thinking to myself, I hope that that ladder don't fall while this is passing me. And I was praying, I was telling God, please protect me. You know, that ladder fell right after it had passed me. And it was deep. I said, Lord, thank you for your protection. That's all I can do. I can drive there. Sometimes I don't even do anything but to smile just to sit there, be, just to be a company to a person that is preaching. They need encouragement. Thank you very much for listening.